Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to anchor in CS2. So first let's start with talking about what is an anchor. An anchor, unlike the other roads that I've so far talked about, is a row that you are going to have on your city side and the guy who is an anchor will most likely on your city side be the support player or the lurker. So an anchor would be the side player. So let's say he plays A on Mirage or he could play B on Mirage and you are going to have two anchors on most of the maps. So the anchor's job is to basically be on the side and guard the side and survive as long as possible. So let's start talking about first why do the support players and the leg players mostly play it. The most obvious answer is because they already have the qualities that are needed for an anchor. Let's talk about a support player first. A support player will most likely stay in the back of the team on the T side, he's going to throw utility, he's going to really know his nades, he's going to have good game knowledge, and he's going to understand how to stay alive for long on the T sides and how to play the late rounds, and basically how to help his teammates. This is very similar to the job of an anchor. The anchor needs to survive, the anchor needs to play well with his utility and the anchor needs to help his teammates in ways where he's going to bait from them so the rotators can get the kills or he can get the kill from somewhere and then hide and just survive which is going to help your team have an easier round further on. And for the lurker as well, he has similar qualities, he's going to stay alive for long, he's going to not go for too many duels, he's not going to be very aggressive and that's again qualities that the anchor needs. Now let's talk about surviving and delaying because I mentioned this a few times. So basically, how your round would look as an anchor is, let's say, you are playing towards A, so you throw a ramp mode off, maybe you go towards underpowers for a little bit in case there is a fast play, you can be here, and then if you want to do something with your smoke, you can, let's say, smoke powers or you can smoke ramp, or you can keep your smoke for longer. If you want to play under powers, you can keep your smoke so you can extinguish the mode of, and so on. And what you want to do is, if you play under powers, let's say and you can keep your smoke, and you hear sound towards ramp, you're going to say the information which is very important. You have to communicate a lot as an anchor whenever you have the information. When nothing is happening on your side, you want to stay silent and not say anything unless you want to make a move. So let's say, if you want to go towards uh, ramp, you want to push ramp alone, Okay, say to your team, I'm going to push ramp alone, or if you don't want to do it alone, ask for a flash from someone, ask for somebody to come with you so they can trade you if you die. But in general, if you're just sitting here and uh, nothing is happening, you don't need to say anything, you need to leave the voice chat basically to the other players that have action on their screen. So whoever has action can talk and you're not saying useless stuff like, uh, I don't know, just saying whatever useless things that your team doesn't care about. So, let's say you hear enemies towards ramp, okay, you say three people ramp, as an example. You say the number, you don't say a ramp. You say three people ramp, or two, one, whatever it is. And let's say they mold of you. You want to just smoke the molly and you want to try to survive as long as possible, so you might come to the corner of the smoke and try to even jump on top of the bricks, but I'm not sure exactly where I'm now in the smoke because I wasn't looking at the radar. So let's say you just try to hide in the smoke, you're trying to kind of dodge bullets and you are just surviving basically and maybe you are even trying to bait the enemies by like, throwing a flash or something. If you can navigate well in the smoke, you can try to go up the ladder. And this way, your enemies are going to be focused on you. Maybe they will be pulling out nades and trying to nade you, trying to spam you. And in this time, your rotators, even if there are smokes, even if it was an execute, there will be at least two people focusing on you, and that leaves the gap for your teammates to push the smoke. Let's say one guy flashes over, the other guy pushes through, and he gets one kill, he goes back through the smoke, the other guy can spam as well, they can nade the smoke. Basically, you are taking away the attention, and you might die, there are high chances you die, but the point of view is that you are trying to take the attention away from the enemies so that your teammates can kill them. And this is again why support players will usually play these positions, because support players are selfless and they are ready for, to die for the team so the others can get the kills and win the round, because all support players care about is, is the round won and did we play well. So if the round is won from you dying, 
that's a good uh, outcome for an anchor player. And from this position usually you will not get kills. Like let's say if they don't mull you, you can get one, you can get two maybe, but then you cannot really survive for that long. But your teammates by that point, by you killing two people, they will already be ready to run in and the other people that are coming from ramp or power will be focused on you again. So you've taken away the attention again. Let's say now we play from city. This is going to be more about surviving and delaying when you play from city. Because from under powers it's more like taking away attention and you can try to survive in your smoke. But let's say from city, you're in jump spotting. And maybe you have an 8 and 2 flashes, whatever. So you're in jump spotting and you see somebody ramp, you're going to throw an 8. And let's say you're not going to try to peek because it will not be good if you try to peek and you die. Because if you die, you cannot survive, you cannot delay. So what you can do is throw the nades, which is going to delay them a bit, and you can throw a flash over, you call the flash that you are throwing, or you can flash like this, just some kind of a flash that is going to be useful, whatever you can find that is good for you. So you're going to throw that flash that might slow them down even more, and they're going to try to mole you, they're going to try to throw something, whatever. If they mole you, you try to cross as fast as possible to the other side, and you still try to survive. And if you, let's say here a plant, you can then jiggle to see if there is anyone there, and then you can prefer the planter and kill him, which is again a part of delaying them, because you kill the bomb planter, so they have to take more time to plant the bomb now. But if you think that there are people close to you, you just want to stay here and survive. And surviving is so important, because you keep a position. So what do I mean by this? Let's say they plant the bomb, and you want to retake. There is a huge difference if you die and your enemies are able to take this control and if you survive and your enemies are able to take control up to here. It is a huge difference because you have way more space for the retake and you have way better positions to play from and you can throw way more utility from this position. So if you have this area, you can let's say mode of ninja or you can nade it, you can flash over. There is a flash lineup from here, I think it's like this, not like this, but I'm not sure exactly about the lineup. But if you don't have that and you are here, now what can you do? You can flash over like this, you can maybe try to flash side like this. But what more can you do? You can't really do anything else from this position. If you keep this control, you have way more things to do. So that's why it's important to survive and delay. And also delaying the enemies will help get the rotations in, so if the enemies would just come outside and plant the bomb that would take let's say 5 seconds, if you molly them they have to take more time, so let's say you either molly them on a timing or you are jump spotting and you see somebody picking ramp and then just molly, maybe you try to cross to the other side that's going to delay them more and it's going to make them worry about you more and if they are worrying about you that delays them as well and when they need to take more time to go on site, that buys more time for, let's say, your open to get this angle. It buys more time for your connecting player, let's say, if your connecting player was here, he can go back and he can help you as well. He can go towards stairs, he can try to get killed towards powers, he can try to pick somebody, just take the attention away, and then your open tries to pick out a bit wider and they start killing the guys. So when you delay, you buy time again for your teammates to come in and get the kills while the enemies are focused on you and even if they are not focused on you you are not taking so and you have good positions and good peaks because of the time that you bought now let's talk a little bit more in depth about communication when you are an anchor so when you are an anchor you want to say precise info and you don't want to be saying too much you don't want to be talking too much you want to say only the necessary stuff and you want to be accurate about what you are saying I gave you an example here if you hear 3 people ramp you call 3 ramp here two people you call two ramp. You don't call ramp or you don't call pushing ramp because that doesn't mean anything. Pushing ramp yeah, is it one, is it two, is it five? We don't know, we have no clue. So say how many people and let's say there's ramp and power, don't say just pushing K. If if it's really close, like if they are here and there, you can say just pushing K because you don't have time to talk, you need to shoot, right? But if you hear them further on, like here one powers and okay. One powers, two ramp. And then you're just playing. And your teammates have to know, in practice you have to talk about this. If you call that there are three people towards your side, this guy rotates, that guy rotates, they throw this kind of utility for you to support you, that type of stuff. 
So your teammates need to know what you mean when you say something and what they need to do how to react to it. And you can also call for rotations, like let's say you're in city and you see somebody out ramp and somebody picks you from pals, you get the kill, okay. You say I rotate to A, it's A. Like let's say there's also like a flash or something, there's some, some kind of motor, and there are people on A. If you hear a lot of people on A, that most likely means the bomb is too unsafe. If there's four people A, there are very small chances the bomb is going B. So you can call uh, that people should rotate. Like just go rotate, and your teammates should know what that means if you're in a team. So that's basically how you want to communicate. You want to say how many people precisely are there, and you can also say what control you have. You can say, I have CT, like if your teammate is coming from CT, I have control to ticket, and he'll know that you mean you are here, and you have this kind of control. You don't have any control for anything, because if you are holding this angle, you would say, I am looking at default from CT, and he would know, okay, they cannot be here, they cannot be there most likely, and they cannot be anywhere there, because you are looking at that. Another important thing as an anchor is playing setups because you cannot play alone every round and if your enemies like to go A a lot and you are the A anchor, what you want to do is call your opener for a setup or call your rifle for a setup. So let's say you can play a setup where you are holding like this towards powers and your opener is holding uh, like this towards city or towards ramp from city. So he's going to look at this, he can take a kill, then he can try to jump, see if he can get another pick and another kill, and in that time you are looking at powers, and if somebody tries to swing from powers to kill the city guy, because obviously the enemies now know that the op is uh, paying attention to a ramp, so they might think, okay there is an op city, I'm the powers player, I'm going to try and go out and kill the guy on city, so they will be not as ready for you. And it might be an easier kill for you. You might get the kill easier because the boss player is not going to be that careful for you. He's going to think about city while picking Q. So you have to play setups like this. And you can also play setups where another player is going to hide. Let's say a con player is going to hide ninja and you're going to bait for him. And the reason he hides and you bait is, again, you're the support and you're selfless and blah blah blah. But the most important thing is, is because if you get a kill, they see your name. Let's say you're playing Team CS and you're playing in a tournament and they know your name. They know that uh, whatever your in-game name is. Let's say your in-game name is uh, Sphinx or whatever. Let's imagine that. Okay, if you're Sphinx and they see that Sphinx got a kill from City and Sphinx is the anchor in that team. I'm not talking about the professional player, let's assume that's your nickname. Okay, Sphinx got a kill from City, he's the anchor. Okay, that means he is on city, site is clear because he's the anchor, he's the guy who's going to play on site. Okay, let's go inside, let's plant the bomb. Okay, but your con player is still hiding in here. And when they're on site, they will not be careful about this because they know the anchor is on city. So they start planting the bomb, whatever, he comes out, he kills the planting, he kills one more, maybe he dies. Whatever, that doesn't matter. The most important thing is that he got two kills and he delayed them even more because he killed the planter. Now they have to take like six more seconds at least to plant the bomb and you got some kills and they didn't expect it at all and you are still surviving and you still have this kind of control and if you got one kill earlier that means it's now a 4v2 so that's why you need to play this kind of setup so you bait and then the other guy can play if he's hiding and you can also do bait and switch but those are the basics that you can you know think of on your own and I don't really need to show you setups here I need to explain how to play this role. So the last thing I'm going to talk about now is going to be rotations. This is something very important for the anchor. And I'm talking about your rotating, not your teammates rotating. So let's say you're playing from city, you can just jump spotting and there's nothing. And if here you're a B anchor, call 3B. That there are 3 enemies on B in apps. Okay, you're not going to rotate. There are two reasons that you're not going to rotate. First of all, it's not all people, it's three. There are two people which you don't know where they are. They could be in the ramp and they could just go out with the bomb and plant the bomb. That could happen. Another possibility is that they're holding your rotation from somewhere. So let's say 
you didn't see them, there was some kind of a timing, and they're holding like this. Whatever. And they'll kill if you try to rotate. Or they have some other position, they have some other control that is going to be dangerous and it's going to stop you from rotating or it's going to kill you. Or they could just peek out while you're taking your knife out if you want to rotate. But you don't rotate if it's 3 b And the second thing is, and I said there's two reasons, the second thing is, is the bomb is not there. So the bomb could be anywhere. The bomb could be forgotten in T-spawn, so they'll go back to T-spawn and then they might want to go back A, whatever. Or the bomb might be on A, waiting for you to get baited into the rotation, and then the players from ups go back to the towards mid, to hold off the rotation back towards A, and there are people coming out of ramp and just planting the bomb on A, and now you're fucked. But if you didn't rotate, you would still have the information here, you would still be jump spotting, and you would see two ramp, and you would do your usual things. You would throw some kind of utility, you would try to delay it somehow, you try to survive, you try to keep the control. The only scenario in which you're going to rotate is if it's 5 people towards B, so if your teammate calls 5B, then you're going to rotate because it's 5 people, there isn't anyone else. You have to trust the info when he calls 5. Sometimes it's not going to be 5, but if he says 5, just try to trust the info as much as you can, because if there is no trust in the team, the team is not going to work. So okay, it's 5B, you rotate. Another scenario is if the bomb is spotted. So let's say you're looking at the raider while he's calling something, like people are B, and you look at the raider and you see the bomb on the raider. Like the bomb is on a person or it's on the ground, then you want to rotate, but you still want to be careful about lurkers, you need to be aware of what control you have. If you don't have control on window, you have to be careful that there could be a lurker in window, and you can try to, you know, clear the angles here, or you could try to just hold if, let's say, your teammates kill 4 people on B, and the bomb is down. That most likely means the last guy is a lurker and he's lurking somewhere. Could be lurking window, could be lurking under, could be lurking somewhere, and doesn't matter. You can either clear the angles, or if you really think he's window, then you can just hold an angle like this or something. If you don't think he's for sure in window, then you can move up, clear the angles like this. And then you can either stay in kitchen and hold an angle from the sofa like this or something. Or you can just go in, hold an angle like this, hold an angle like this. In general, hold basically the back of your teammates. If they're holding ups and short, you want to hold their back so they cannot get flanked. So again, you'll be doing a boring job, but that's basically what the job of an anchor is. The job of an anchor is to help your team win, not to get highlights, not to get 50 kills. Okay? So that's basically it from this video. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I hope it helped you improve as an anchor. And if it did, you can leave a like and you can subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any upcoming content. Thank you for watching.